Hi, I'm Larry Sharp, and today we're going to talk about how to leave a great voicemail. All right, so what you'll hear often from people is voicemail is your time to pitch. It's got to be a good voicemail so that when they hear it, they think, all right, now I understand what you do so I can make that phone call. That's false. Most people don't even listen to voicemail anymore. If you walk down the hallways of most of the businesses today, you'll see the light on, on the, the voicemail light on, on all the phones. People are waiting for you to email them or text them or follow up some other way. Voicemail is sometimes checked only once a day or sometimes twice a day. So for you to assume someone's going to listen to that voicemail and listen to your pitch, probably not going to happen. So let's assume that every once in a while they zip through their voicemail quickly. Boom, boom, boom. If that's the case, you want your voicemail to be very specific. You want it to be short, you want it to be urgent, and you want it to be vague. Yes, urgent and vague. The more detail you put into a voicemail, the less chance I want to call you back. The less urgent it is, the less chance I want to call you back. The odds are I won't call you back anyway. That's just how most what happens with most voicemails. But if I at least remember you, when you call back, mm, at that point, I take your phone call. So here's your template. First part of your voicemail. Someone says, you've reached the voicemail of Jane Doe, please leave a message. You're going to say, Jane. You're going to start your voicemail with that person's first name. Announcing their name, Jane, Bob, whoever their name is. That's going to get their attention. Because of course, when you check your email, you say, oh, email, oh, I'm so happy. No, you don't, right? No one does. Check their email while they're going to their their email, they check their voicemail while they're checking anything else, they're talking to people, they're doing all kinds of things while they press that button for voicemail. So you announcing their name all of a sudden now, it's their attention. Hmm, do I know this person? Should I pay attention? Should I listen? The next part of your voicemail is going to be a sentence that is both vague and urgent with a word like need, should, must, got to, however you would say and however you would show urgency. We need to talk about so-and-so. We should discuss blah, blah, blah. Let's say you're selling a, um, a service that affects that person's marketing. You might want to say something like, Jane, we should talk about your marketing. Jane, we need to talk about your marketing. Or whatever the case may be, something urgent, something vague. Then who you are. You may not use my name is. You must only use either this is or it's. It's far more familiar. Right? And only your first name, not your last name. So. This is Larry over at Neosage. It's Larry over at Neosage. Something just like that. Friendly, first name, who you are. So again, Jane, we should talk about your marketing. It's Larry over at Neosage. Then your phone number in a very specific, succinct way. Area code, nice long pause, very long pause, extended pause, then the next three and the next four. So, Jane. We need to talk about your marketing. It's Larry over at Neosage. 212-123-4567. Click. Hang up. Perfect voicemail. You do not need to say the phone number twice. That's assuming you're going to have a seven-minute spiel and you don't want them to replay it because your, your phone message is 10 minutes long, of course. But if your phone message is just a couple of seconds, one time's enough. Not just that, you said 212. What did that person do? They went to grab the pen and a pencil, right? So they're hopefully writing that number down. In the perfect case scenario, what happens is, Jane, hmm, who's this person? They've talked about your marketing. What about my marketing? It's Larry over at Neosage. Do I know Larry at Neosage? 212, hmm, 123, 4567. Home run for you. If that happens, best chance they will actually write your number down maybe even call you back, I hope so. But even if they don't call you back, when you get the voicemail from you again, when they get a message from their assistant, when they get an email from you, they're gonna remember that voicemail, better chance they reply, talk to you, and you can get that one-on-one. -on -one. So remember, name, vague, short, who you are, first name, phone number, one time, long pause. Jane, we need to talk about your marketing. It's Larry over at Neosage. 212 123 4567. This is not magic. 
all of a sudden everyone's not gonna call you back. Here's what I'm promising you. Use this technique and you will have more people calling you back. If you only have a 5% return, it'll be 10. If you have 10%, it'll be 15 or 20. You will get more people returning your phone calls using this method. Good luck.